here, y'all. I know you think it's a game, but it is absolutely not, okay? This is the energy supplement from Just Move Supplements. That's right. It's damn near all gone, girl. And that's because I had to get that energy up so I can complete the workout. So I can give y'all this body, this transformation, get into it, okay? And I'm done working out now. So that's why we're moving on to the protein shake. Oh, yes. It's already in there, girl. It's already made right here. This is the mixture of the banana pudding, the chocolate cake, and the buttercream cupcake and you really want to be fancy you can go ahead and add that blueberry muffin if that's what you want to do girl but for me it's these three right here okay you put that with some almond milk you mix it all up and honey okay your muscles have gained life new energy agility get into it okay just move supplements thank you very much hold up chief okay don't forget about that tlc nutri burst to get that multivitamin product because we all need a little extra and child if you want that sea moss that go down smooth don't come up rough okay get into the tlc nautica sea moss yes get that from me and child if your stomach hurt and you need to move some things around so you can be free okay go ahead and get that ISO T down below in the description box. Get it all from me. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Now come on in. Now come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Right? Wow. <laughs> What's going on, people? We're back. We're back. It's your girl, Bondi Blue. What's going on, everybody? I hope y'all are having a good day. I hope y'all having a good Friday. Good start to y'all weekend, baby. Okay? Girl, listen. We have, we have a few things to talk about. We have a few things to talk about. Okay, and then we're going to have a members only live right after this one. That's right. We getting them in today, girl. We getting them in. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing? Oh, my God. Lovely to see you. Have came through. Appreciate it so much. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Show your girls some love. Okay, as you come on in. So, did you guys catch the Ooh Ladies first panel last night? Because we had a really good time, okay? It was on my panel. Shout out to Mike Worlds, Nisi, and Jamie, okay? And my niece and my nephew. Shout out to them. We talked about Christian Combs last night. We did, girl. We talked about Christian Combs last night. But today, oh wait, there's more. <laughs> Listen, I, th it wasn't. This is not a I told you so moment. You know what I'm saying? Because I I don't want anybody to think I'm happy about this shit. I'm not happy about any of this. I'm just also not willing to be delusional about it. I'm not willing to like ignore all of the like you know blaring red flags with this whole situation historically. What's been going on? You know what I'm saying? I want you to ask yourself. Ask yourself. What type of man makes people walk from a borough to another book? Motherfucker, people catch trains to go from one borough to the to the other. He made them people walk. <laughs> he made them people walk. I don't understand the mentality of somebody that makes everybody around them feel like they have something to prove to him. And I think that that's the thing that everybody's like missing when it comes to the kids. They're grown. Let's start there. But essentially, and I'm going to read the story from Los Angeles Times. Essentially, he's still their father in any type of you got to be on top of it. You got to can't stop, won't stop. Eh -eh. You got to be like me. That, that's what it looks like to me, to me, right? Not that I want any of this to be happening. Do you think I want some of my favorite music artists to be some of the most unsafe on this planet? Like, it's insane. And there are a whole bunch of unsafe on this planet, but 
it, it says something for people that create melodic music to pull you in all so that they can abuse you. Hold up. Okay. Let me read to y'all what they had said. Okay. This story contains a description of an alleged sexual assault. Trigger warning, prepare yourself. Sean Diddy Combs has been named in another civil lawsuit, this time by a woman alleging that his son, Christian King Combs, assaulted her aboard a super yacht. The Bad Boy Entertainment co-founder charted in late 2022. But the Combs team dismissed it as just another lewd and meritless claim by her attorney, Tyrone Blackburn. That is filled with the same kind of manufactured lies and irrelevant facts that they've come to expect from the New York-based lawyer. I don't trust Tyrone Blackburn either, you guys. I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. I don't. I don't. That's why I'm still open to this being a lie with Christian. I'm still open to this being a lie, but it just kind of seems less than likely that it's a lie considering Diddy. <laughs> like, it just, I'm sorry, y'all. Diddy kills this for me. Okay, but let's continue. In the lawsuit, five day in Los Angeles County Superior Court, Grace O. Marquet added her name to the list of people accusing the embattled business mogul of alleged wrongdoing while he faces a federal probe into sex trafficking allegations. Omar K, I think that's how you pronounce it. Omar K, who worked as a steward on the Victoria ship, alleged that the 20-year-old rapper Christian Combs drugged and essayed her in late December 2022 aboard the boat charter, which Diddy sold as a wholesome family excursion that devolved into a hedonistic environment. So the kids, bring your friends. We're going to have a good time. All of a sudden, Diddy's peens out. Oh my God, you guys, make sure you're sending super chats. I may not get paid for this video, but I wanted to come to y'all with, you know, the truth was going on, okay? I wanted to come to y'all with, you know, what was going on, okay? Environment is how she explained it. Omar K, who was 25 around the time of the alleged incident, provided dinner and drink service on the yacht from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So she worked there, y'all. The bartender also said she witnessed partying and drug use between a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and other A-list celebrities, according to the filing reviewed Friday by the time. Omar K is accusing Christian Combs, one of Diddy's children with the late model Kim Porter, of SA, harassment, and infliction of emotional distress in the lawsuit, which seeks unspecified damages in a jury trial. A jury trial. Diddy, 54, who is named as a co-defendant, is being sued for premises liability Hold up. Sue for, yeah, premises liability as the person who leased the yacht and had full control of the staff and premises and for aiding and abetting his son in the alleged assault. Omar K accused him of orchestrating a subsequent cover up of her alleged assault that ultimately resulted in her termination in May 2023. Now, I don't know if y'all know. But it's bad business to assault people and then fire them. I don't know if you know. Okay. She claimed that Diddy allowed for unwanted exposure to unlawful drug use, sex work, and general chaos, adding that the mogul created an extremely hazardous environment in which staff was often treated with disrespect. Suspected sex workers were sprawled out unconscious on the yacht, and it was difficult to distinguish between bottles of alcohol that were laced with drugs, which and which bottles were not okay which ones were which ones were not rodney told us about them you know putting things in certain bottles i mean versus the ones that were for the guys there she described women aboard the yacht falling over themselves panicking or passing out after one shot of tequila or one mixed drink that she believed was likely laced with drugs 
The complaint was filed by Tyrone A. Blackburn. The lawyer who is also representing Diddy's former love album producer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, in a bombshell sexual harassment and assault case brought against the Grammy Award winner, his son, Justin Dior Combs, Oscar winner, Cuba Gooding Jr., and other members of Diddy's inner circle. Omar K. in her complaint described Jones as an extended member of the service staff who spent time with her at service bar and piano room on the yacht. She also made several other allegations about illicit behavior by Diddy and Gooding. So she's cooperating with Rodney was saying, whom she says she witnessed inappropriately touching Jones as was alleged in Jones lawsuit. Like father, like son, Blackburn said in a statement to NBC News, God damn, which first reported on the new lawsuit. It gives us no joy or pleasure in filing this suit against Christian Combs, who has clearly adopted his father's pattern and practice of depravity. And I quote, Blackburn and fellow filing attorney Rodney S. Diggs did not respond Friday to the Times request for comments. This is just another lewd and meritless claim from Tyrone Blackburn, just like what he filed in the Rodney Holmes lawsuit, which he still has not served, said attorney Aaron Dyer, who represents both Sean and Christian Combs. Why? Why then is Misa online talking about getting a girl? <sighs> Just talking. This complaint is filled with the same kind of manufactured lies and irrelevant facts we've come to expect from Blackburn. This is exactly why the federal judge in New York slapped him two days ago for a pattern of behavior and improperly filing cases in federal court to garner media attention. Embarrassed defendants with salacious allegations and pressure defendants to settle quickly. And why he was defer referred to the disciplinary committee in the Southern District of New York, we will be filing a motion to dismiss this outrageous claim. Now, listen, I believe that Tyrone Blackburn is a ambulance chaser, if you will. I don't believe that um, he is on the up and up, but I also feel like you don't necessarily need to be on the up and up to be a good attorney. OK, so we'll just see how this all plays out. But, um, yeah, I, I it's not what I wanted, but it. it <laughs> You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people cooperating the same chain of events, y'all. Um. Anyway, in the past, Diddy has denied wrongdoing and vowed to fight the lawsuit. Suits for women, including his ex, Cassie, have sued him since last November, alleging S.A. Omar K., who is described in court documents as a European Caucasian female who worked as a stewardess in the yachting industry since 2018, says she plans to work the entirety of her career in hospitality in the yacht industry. But as stated in her complaint, those plans have been derailed due to the trauma she continues to have as a result of the assault. On or around December 28, 2022, days before Diddy hosted a star-studded New Year's Eve party aboard the ship, Omar K said that she worked the late shift on the yacht when Christian Combs, who usually stayed at a nearby villa on shore, came aboard heavily intoxicated from what Omar K believed was a mixture of narcotics and alcohol. While she was serving drinks in the studio where Jones also was present that night, Christian was being particularly attentive with her, which she considered very inappropriate. Christian then insisted that Omar K take a shot of tequila, which she believed he had spiked. She stated that she felt comfortable knowing that Mr. Jones was present and didn't think anything more of it and thought she could return to the pantry after the drink. But when she took the shot, she said the mood changed and things became sinister. Girl, why you took the shot? I know why. She probably felt pressured. Just take the shot and going about my business. Omar described Christian violently grabbing her arm and hurting her as he insisted that she take another shot. Well, I mean, then at this point, you're forcing the girl. After that, the situation escalated <clears throat> and she described being physically assaulted by Christian, whom she alleged touched her legs, breasts, anus and vagina, who also tried to kiss her on the neck, face and hands. She said the timeline became very blurry and vague. But because Omar K said Diddy insisted on Mr. Jones recording everything, Lil Rod obtained an audio recording of the alleged incident in which Omar K believes Christian did all of this. The recording was submitted as an exhibit in Omar K's case. So there's an audio recording of it. In the transcript of the recording, 
included in a complaint to describe the alleged incident. Omar K tries to leave but does not let her. She tells him not to touch her legs or backside. After she left, the complaint said Christian later found her and demanded that she find him a place to sleep on the yacht and he refused to go back to shore. Omar K went with him to the cinema, which was commonly used as a sleeping area, allegedly blocked her from visiting. She described Christian getting physical and extremely aggressive, cornering her and allegedly groping her despite her pushing back. He allegedly removed his clothes, exposed his situation and physically tried to force her into performing on him she began fighting him and then one of her colleagues entered the cinema startling christian and omar k was able to leave she said she was seriously bruised as a result of the attack that she did not consent to any of the sexual assault or misconduct and that she was drugged and intoxicated by christian images of her bruising were also included in the complaint Omar K said she complained to the yacht captain the next morning, but alleged that he berated her, lacked compassion or concern, failed to investigate, and insisted that she was probably voluntarily partying with the guests. She said she was not. After the incident, Marquez said that she was assigned to work in the front of the house, which required her to personally serve Christian Combs while he was aboard the yacht. She also alleged that the captain received a generous tip from Diddy to keep quiet and from protecting Omar K or taking action on her behalf. She alleged that Diddy fostered and encouraged an environment of debauchery and did not have any safeguards in place to ensure there was no excessive drug use, excessive drinking, and no in, or I'm sorry, and no importation of imported sex workers. Cause girl, that's what you would that's what the boat's there for, girl. Maritime law. <laughs> he intentionally created an unsafe environment that gave license to Christian. Told him checking back in with y'all because I'm, you know, I'm reading on another page. Um, 700 of y'all in a row. Make sure y'all like the video. I'm continuing the read. Okay. He intentionally created an unsafe environment that gave license to Christian Combs and his friends to believe that he was free to sexually assault Omar K and allowed him and his friends to behave carelessly as they observed and mimicked his actions. Omar K said that the alleged assault deeply impacted her mental health as well as her professional and personal life. She alleged that as a result of the alleged attack, her mental health deteriorated. She experienced anxiety and panic attacks and had severe suicidal ideations. The lawsuit said. She claims the emotional strain affected her physical health and she developed eating disorder and epileptic seizures following the incident. Damn. Oh, girl, gonna try to take them from all for all they got, basically. So, um, yeah, y'all, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm kind of inclined to believe just based on the way she like that's the person that they feel they can get away with taking advantage of because they work there, y'all. She wasn't just somebody they brought on the boat that could have just left. This is somebody who feels like this is my career, these are celebrities. I kind of have to, you know, <clears throat> turn a blind eye. But then you get assaulted. And then it's kind of like, man, nah, fuck that shit. <laughs> man, like, no, like, you're not about to get away with doing that to me just because you think, you know what I mean? So I, I definitely can see, especially like she said with him just repeating his father's behavior. I could absolutely, paying people off, that all sounds about right, y'all. That all sounds about right. Yeah, and I do want us to be honest that Kim was locked in a house before she passed away. She wasn't stopping anything from happening when she was still here. All of this was going on. And if you ask me, I feel like there's something that is not um, benevolent about the way he took in Quincy. It's something about that dynamic I don't feel good about. Like, you didn't take in Quincy because you love Kim and you wanted Quincy to have you know, stable environment. No, you wanted to take somebody else's son and raise him as your own and then maybe possibly have control of his, you know, his life. Like if you are a power hungry person, it's something you may want to do. This is sad. I'm not happy about this. I don't know why everybody thinks when we talk about these stories because we've been seeing the writing on the wall and it's like, you know, hello, we're just <laughs> we're just telling you what we've been saying this entire time. Nobody's happy about this shit. I don't know where people get that from. Um, yeah, he thought he could hurt one of the female employees. Yeah, they're employee. 
That, that that's why that's why this because i was talking to my husband about it earlier and he was like you know why didn't she leave i'm like well now we know first of all you drugged her um then on top of the fact that you drugged her she worked there so usually when people work on the ships they stay on the ship they don't get off like they're the service people so they're there to be of service like basically 24 hours a day which is why he was able to go and get her again to ask her to get him somewhere to stay I also feel like she's not saying that anything like, you know, he didn't actually, you know, like if you're going to lie, <laughs> shit, why not go full throttle? Anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, y'all, but it's not looking good at all. And I know there are several documentaries in the works right now about Diddy, and I'm sure they're going to include his y'all. He's partied with his sons. I feel like he's impressed this lifestyle on them. In one way or another, you know what I'm saying? So it's just sad. I also feel like this look, he looks sad in the eyes. Like Christian looks sad in the eyes. Like, I don't know if anything's in there. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but anyway, um, y'all like the video and we're gonna we're gonna move on, girl. Um, just a little quick break. Like the video. <laughs> Okay, y'all. So let's go ahead and um, get into Amanda Seals very quickly. Um... Okay, honestly, I've had enough. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Really? Three pieces. Three from three people I have never met in my life. From three publications that are supposed to be about uplifting Black people, which is all I have dedicated my life to doing. Shit! What hubris do I have? You people literally cannot stand that someone has studied and is speaking on what they study, that someone has read and is speaking on what they read. You can't stand that someone loves us, that someone loves us so much that their passion is so exemplary and exuding through the phone that it touches people who literally have never felt love that much and don't know how to process it. That's what you're feeling. I want to send all the love to everyone who has shown me love. But you people who are continuing to attempt to break me down, you will not break me. You cannot break me. I am loved. I am anointed. I am touched. I am working through the blood of our ancestors. You will not break me. And it is so sad that you are so broken that this is the effort that you would take to try and get some clout. And you know what? Let's say I did get broken. Y'all will be the first ones to be like, see, y'all be doing too much. No, big up to all my strong black women who are supporting other strong black women and every other person supporting us. We love you. The rest of y'all can suck up. Okay. So I, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to agree with my girl Amanda here. And the reason why I say that is because I think y'all hold celebrities and people on the internet to a higher regard than regular people. And so because you may not have the perspective of thousands of people talking shit to you all the time, you don't understand how one can only take so much. One can only take so much. I feel like people dislike Amanda and the 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 whole thing is, oh, Amanda's a bitch or Amanda says something I did not like. Everybody on the Internet says something you don't like and acts like a bitch sometimes. Everybody. The men, the women, everybody. And that's because at the end of the day, like nobody has to pretend to be something for the public. 
Nobody has to do that. But what I will say is the main issue here is that Amanda is very vocal in politics and connecting hip hop and entertainment to politics at this point. She is good at what she does. She has consistently been a relevant entertainment industry since she was a child. Um, and I feel like she should not be ignored simply because some of you don't like her because I have not liked Diddy for a long time. And y'all still gave his ass an honorary BET award. Y'all still named an award after Dr. Dre, like people who actually physically harm people. Y'all not only invite to award shows and award them, but you also put awards in their names, in their honors. So it's very annoying for me the way people treat Amanda as if she's so fucking terrible that she should not be invited into these very spaces that I believe she does fight to protect and to uphold and to keep abreast of what's going on versus people that are feeding y'all bullshit, but it tastes good. So everybody's good, right? People don't always have to be likable in every way in order to be thought provoking. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I do feel like, like, I'm going I'm to make the comparison to Candace Owens. I don't like Candace Owens. I feel like she has very nefarious intentions regardless of how y'all may feel about her. But at the end of the day, do I feel like it was right for them not to invite her to the GOP convention? No, I don't think that was right because she's an advocate for your ideologies. She's an advocate for your party and you did not invite her. Why? 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 So yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I know a lot of y'all like Candace Owens. A lot of y'all do. I don't understand why. I don't know what y'all, I don't know, you know, what y'all really be listening to when she talks. Um, but I know a lot of y'all love her and it's very, very weird to me, but you know, girl, do your thing. I, I don't subscribe and I don't care to, um, you know, that's just me, girl. Um, <laughs> she is solid. Okay. Okay. That's. <laughs> I think that might be up for debate, but okay. Um, I recognize how, how she comes off. And to me, I feel like people, people enjoy her merely because she, you know, um, says, I think problematic things. And then hits her R's really hard. And so in essence, you know, I may not like her, but I don't feel like she should be excluded from the places that she is, you know, defending and all of that. Like, I don't feel, you know, yes, absolutely. Agree to disagree. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, love. Do your thing. Okay. But, um, yeah, no, I, <laughs> girl, I, I, I um, but yes. Ultimately, different sides of the coin um, infuriate people maybe around the same level, depending on which side you're on, okay? And I still feel like, essentially, Candace deserves to be invited to the Republican Convention, and I feel like Amanda should be invited to the NAACP Awards. Like, what the fuck is really hood? And I feel like, you know, what's, we know what we have in common here? Like, two Black women that are not being um, included or not being put at equal standing with the other people around them. I, I see how interesting that is. I see how interesting that is. I don't know why it's so hard to be fair. I don't know why. I don't know why it's so hard to be fair. Maybe because I'm a Libra, moon, and rising girl. Fairness, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, no. See, and that's another thing. I'm also tired of everybody feeling like black women cannot show emotion in public. I, I need y'all to realize like how systematic that is and how based and steeped in, as she said, of the answers that is for y'all to feel like black women can never emote or show emotion. Um, they need to always be holding everything in. And don't get me wrong, y'all. That's how I live my life. I ain't crying in front of no fucking body. Like, not really. There are times I have been on my platform but ultimately i'm not trying to cry in front of no fuck no no nobody especially if it's people that i can't trust with my feelings i ain't trying to cry in front of you bitches okay no 
But at the same time, I know how important it is to be vulnerable and be true to your emotions and your feelings and how squashing them down for other people's benefit does not benefit you. So because of that, whenever black women get online and cry, even though my, 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 you know, trauma tells girl, stop crying for these fucking people. Don't cry in front of these people. Do you care about your feelings? Don't cry in front of these people. Even though that's how I feel. Ultimately, I got to check off because you know, if the tears come in, bitch, don't, don't try to lock them in your throat. Don't try to lock them in your throat. That, that, that's not going to work. You can't lock it in your throat. <laughs> okay. Um, pretty stable mind and not highly emotional. Okay. That, that's why I ain't doing all of that. Okay. <laughs> that's why I ain't doing all of that. Okay. Um, but yeah, y'all, I do feel like there is nothing wrong with Amanda expressing her feelings about how she feels excluded. Um, because I do feel like the black community likes to exclude people. Like, I don't know why everybody acts as if the black community does not take on the same mindsets and, you know, the same type of um, ways of being as the oppressors do. White people create, you know, a, a mid and, and, and a group that's in and a group that's out and black people do the same thing. They do the same thing. And I, I'm not a fan of it, in all honesty, especially when somebody is always fighting so hard for black people in general through what they do. You know, how they speak, how the commentary, what they're trying to infuse in culture, which is to be intellectual. And there is a degradation that's happening. And nobody likes it because everybody wants to take it from a moral standpoint. Y'all are always worried about bitches twerking and sexy red smelling like weed. Like everybody's always so worried about those morality things. But when it comes to the intellectualism involved, y'all don't give a fuck about that. Like... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, and in my opinion, I think that's why a lot of y'all like Candace Owens so much because she comes off like an intellectual to people that are starving for into intellectualism in in this environment on social media. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I get that. But I also feel like you you got to pay attention to when people are talking out of both sides of their neck about, you know, certain subject matters. OK, especially ones that are imperative to your comfort in this country. That's all. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like people, I notice a lot of black people only care about taxes these days. <laughs> y'all really only care about taxes. Y'all don't care about none of this other shit going on. Y'all started making a little money and now all of a sudden everybody's Republican because they're trying to make sure that they don't have to pay as much in taxes. Girl, I get it. You know, I work for myself, but at the same time, nah, man, I'm sorry. Uh, the civil rights, um, also, I really would like for our country not to turn into the handmaiden's tail. And I feel like the closer we get to Republican ideals, the more we're getting into a, like a, you know, a Stepford Wives, women under mass control, baby making machine, no freedom type of vibe. And that's not what I want for any of us. Um, I don't want that for any of us, to, to, to tell you the truth. OK. Um, and that's just where I'm coming from with it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this country is only as great as it is because there is a certain level of freedom um, associated with it. Even if they did sell you that on some bullshit, there's still a level of freedom here that I would like for us not to be rolling back, you know, <laughs> rolling back the years on, you know. Um, but, you know, that, that, we ain't trying to get too deep now. We ain't trying to get too deep. OK, but yes, for the 1099 crew. Listen. OK. Listen, <laughs> but let's go ahead um, and move on, girl. Let's talk about Megan James because she went to old lady game. <laughs> Don't you want to go to the place to be where strangers become family over fried chicken and mac and cheese? Three old ladies recipes. What don't you and your family come hey, guys. with candy and the gang? Okay, listen, I'm sorry. I had to do it. <laughs> okay, I had to do it. I had to do it, y'all. Okay, let's get into it. Guys, I'm not Keith Lee or anything, but I just love Old Lady Gang. Upon arriving there, I thought the food was going to come out really, really fast because there were zero people in the restaurant. But we ordered our food at 5 o'clock and got it at 5.47. They brought out silverware with only forks, no spoons or no knives. I was forced to drink tap water because they had no bottled water. 
They also charge an 18% gratuity on parties over, I believe, which is totally fine. But part of our drink. So he sat two pitchers of water and soda on our table for us to service ourselves. Yeah. Now let's get into the food. You say you want some snacks? I had baked chicken. I give it a six out of ten. It was seasoned on the outside, not really seasoned on the inside, but it was made really, really well, like meat falling off the bone. The kids had hamburgers, loved them. My man had fish and he said it was bussin'. The greens was a 12 out of 10. The macaroni was watery as hell. Don't order it. What else? The cornbread, 12 out of 10. And I actually loved our waiter. He was really, really nice. But lazy. Y'all need to get some bottled water. People don't drink tap water. Well, not everybody. Okay, what's wrong? <laughs> Um, listen, y'all know I love, I love my girl Candy. Y'all know I love Candy. Um, but what's wrong? What's wrong with what she said? <laughs> she, she said the food was good for the most part, but they're a little bit lazy when it comes to service. Um, that's not surprising to me. Have y'all seen OLG? Like, have y'all seen the show? Have y'all <laughs> y'all hear me singing a the theme song? Don't you want to go? Okay. Like, Megan is from Houston, so I know she is used to poor service at a Black-owned establishment. <sighs> a lot of times, y'all, poor poor service at Black establishments. I hate to say it, y'all, but I, I, listen, I eat. I eat and I go out, okay? And a lot of the times, there's something there's always an issue like and, and then also i feel like when you go to black establishments sometimes it's all and not every place i go to just to be clear y'all but a lot of black restaurants they act like you're going to run out on the bill and it's like bitch i'm 35 years old i ain't never ran out on no bill in my motherfucking life okay <laughs> and i'm expecting good service because i tip you know what i'm saying like, I, I just want to have a good experience. But this is why I always go to places that have like a 4.5 rating or higher. Um, I try to stay, you know, in a certain, you know, price range when I go to dinner and I really care. Because I don't have time for y'all to be fucking up this experience for me because you tired and you don't want to be here today. Like, I, what? I also don't want your tap water. I'm sorry. Is it? I, I don't drink tap water either. So sorry, <laughs> bitch. Where is the bottled? Like, I'm sorry. I'm from New Orleans. I don't trust anybody's tap water at this point. Okay? I don't trust anybody's tap water. It's not a personal thing. I just prefer bottled. So if I'm coming to a restaurant, you know, that's highly rated, I am kind of expecting, like, bottled water. My bad, money. My bad. <laughs> um. So for me, I don't anything wrong with what Megan said like she was really trying to kill him like that but it did give I'm trying to give my little cute sarcastic dry ass review you know for some social media content and people jump on a, you know they jump on your social media content as if you're making it to shade somebody but you just doing what everybody else do telling how you felt about this and about that but because you Megan James everybody gonna make a big deal out of it you know what I'm saying um you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and y'all, I was just having this conversation um, that about, you know, about Atlanta food. Atlanta food is like, it's okay, but coming from where I come from, uh, yikes, <laughs> yikes, <laughs> get it to it, Chuck. Um, I, listen, I hope for better experiences in Atlanta. There have been places with really good food in Atlanta, but girl, they're few and far in between. We get good food, good food at the corner store. <laughs> okay. We get good food at the corner store. Um, I'm just saying, like, as far as I'm concerned, I also feel like I don't know what's happening. Seasoning, seasonings, like what's happening? What's happening with the seasonings? Where are the seasonings? You know what I'm saying? It's just my, it's not, it's just my personal, my personal. Okay. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and, and let's move on. Um, since we're talking about candy, let's let's press on here right quick. Um, okay, so escape members post and delete a message claiming they have the right to use their trademark despite not having all members of the group active. 
the more you know. A co-owner of a trademark is unable to maintain an infringement action against another co-owner of the trademark. Each co-owner has the right to exercise its trademark rights, including granting licenses in third parties. A valid licensee of one co-owner of a trademark cannot be liable to another co-owner for infringement. Okay. Candy says, I only deleted because they want to do a collaboration post. It's going back up. Don't worry. Okay. Candy said, bitch, I meant what I said. Despite all the rumors, Escape SWV, the Queens of R&B tour is definitely still on. Get your tickets now and come kick it with us. We love our fans. Can't wait to see you there. Okay. And it is basically linked Latasha. Latasha tried to shut down the Queens of R&B tour featuring SWV and Escape by claiming unauthorized use of the group's trademark. Is that what you tried to do, Latasha? Latasha. Latasha, why, girl? It's giving hater. I mean, if you don't want to come outside of the house and make your money, that's your business. But why are you trying to stop the girls from doing it? What's happening? What's happening to trying to stop? People's money, girl. Now, Latasha, you must really be miserable over there at that house if this is what you're doing with your time. You know what I'm saying? It's giving miserable. It's giving bitter, bitter. You're not on. You're not on tour. We, you know, I'm sure that reality show shit did not happen because you didn't want to be a part of it. That might have been one of the reasons. Also, you hoes cannot get along. But I was just like, Latasha, it's giving hater. <laughs> okay, it is giving super duper duper hater. And we wish you would stop. We do. Oh, special guest Maya Total and SO702. But let me tell you something. Y'all, you y'all gonna have two members of 702? Okay. Um, with special guest Maya and in total okay okay listen i want to see maya and i only want to see total if pam is there that's how i feel when i'm with my friends i'm trying to figure out a way to leave them behind just singing to you oh, oh. <laughs> i had to do it y'all i'm sorry make sure y'all like the video we're about to get into the next Last two topics, you guys, and then I'm going to get out of here and we're going to do our members only live at 6.05. Okay, okay, okay. Now, listen, we have an available seat. We actually have two available seats, I think, now um, for the Phuket Thailand trip. So please, you guys, if you are interested in signing up, go to Reset by Design Wellness on Instagram as well as ResetByDesignWellness.com and sign up girl. We're going to have a really great time. I'm super duper excited about the Thailand trip. We had an amazing time when we went to Ghana last year in November. Um, great accommodations, really good time, really good energy. I'm looking forward to this next one, girl, because it, it's giving a build up to a reset, girl. It's giving a build up to a bitch needing a reset. So make sure you guys sign up. Use my code. You can get 5% off using my code down below in the description box, Bondi5, and get 5% off the trip, girl. Okay? So make sure y'all come through. All right. Can I tell y'all that I have always been an Angelina Jolie fan? I don't know if y'all know. I don't know if y'all know. That's my girl. Okay? I don't give a... That's my girl. Okay. And I was here for it at first, Mr. and Mrs. Smith days, right? I was here for it. I was like, oh, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, that's ugh, that's good. That's ugh, that's ah. Okay. And then they used to be coming down here to New Orleans all the time. And then they bought the uh, what was it? The the, the Madame uh Delphine Lalari. They they bought that house, I believe. Anyway, or uh, one of the houses in that area, child, but they was all up and through the French quarters and shit after Katrina. You know, they was down here building houses and shit. I was like, why right where people building, you know, container houses and shit. Boom. Years later, we find out girl cheap materials. And we also find out that Brad Pitt is apparently a fucking tyrant. I have never really discussed this on my channel. I don't think maybe once or twice y'all talk about so much stuff. I cannot remember it all. But girl, the way they say the children don't want to be involved with Brad. The way uh, stories keep coming out about him being like abusive and stuff like that. Wow. Let me read to y'all what they saying on Hollywood Unlocked. In a recent legal development, Angelina Jolie's lawyer, lawyers, 
have made shocking allegations against her ex-husband, Brad Pitt, claiming the actor had a history, sorry, y'all, had a history of physical abuse towards Jolie that began before the widely publicized 2016 plane incident. The incident which occurred during the flight from France to Los Angeles led to Jolie filing for divorce and sparked a contentious legal battle between the former Hollywood power couple. The pair's years-long legal dispute is over their French winery, Chateau Miraval, in France, and their shared ownership. Jolie's legal team recently filed a motion seeking to release communications that they argue would demonstrate Pitt's alleged abusive behavior towards Jolie prior to the 2016 plane incident. The court documents claim that Pitt had a pattern of physical abuse towards Jolie, which escalated to include their children during the fateful plane journey. The couple who purchased the Chateau Marival estate in 2008 and later ventured into winemaking with the Perrin family each own a 50% share in the property. Following their divorce, Jolie sold her stake in the winery to a Russian oligarch, leading to a lawsuit from Pitt alleging obstruction and unfair sale of her ownership. Okay, now y'all, I'm about to go and look up this, uh, this plane ride. Hold up now. Hold up, y'all just give me one minute. <laughs> Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie. Hold up, Angelina Jolie. Yo, then get out of my head, Beyonce. Uh, five, okay. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, plane ride. Let me do plane ride. Cause shall. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. I'm, you know, I be trying to go back. I be trying to go back so I can get something from before all of this. You know what I'm mean? saying? Okay. Got it. Los Angeles Times. Okay. The details of Angelina. <sighs> no, they did not just hit me up right quick. Y'all, they just hand me up. I'm sorry. As soon as I started reading, click. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> that was fucked up. Okay. 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 Like, everything wants me to, like, pay for something. Why are they like this? Uh, uh, Y'all, just give me a second. I'm sorry. Uh. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Got it. People. People's people is people going to leave me alone? People's going to leave me alone. Okay. Further details are revealed in the FBI's closed 2016 investigation into an allegedly abusive incident with Brad Pitt in front of their kids on a private jet. The 2016 FBI report into the conflict between Angelina and Brad on a private plane requested in a FOIA earlier this year has been obtained by people under the anonymous Jane Doe Jolie requested FBI documents about the 2016 plane incident be released to her. Her under the Freedom of Information Act amid an ongoing custody battle with Pitt. The highly redacted documents obtained by people reveal new insight into the alleged September 14, 2016 incident, which came days before Jolie filed for divorce. The Los Angeles Department of Child and Family Services and FBI have investigated Pitt after an anonymous tip about a drunken, a drunken argument he got into with Jolie while their family traveled on a private jet from France back to their Los Angeles home. Pitt allegedly got verbally abusive and physical with one of their kids on the plane, a source said at the time. Pitt denied any abuse. The FBI closed its investigation by November of that year with no charges against Pitt. Earlier that month, DCFS also concluded its investigation into the incident earlier with no findings of abuse. According to the FBI report, Jolie noted there was tension between her and Pitt, claiming that his actions that day made her feel like a hostage on the plane. He allegedly grabbed and choked and shook her. I'm sorry, not choked, shook. He grabbed and shook her, pushed her into a wall and punched the plane ceiling. When she said it appeared like he was going to attack one of their children for calling him a prick during the dispute, 
Jolie admitted to wrapping her arms around Pitt's neck in a chokehold style. I was trying to stop this nigga from hitting that kid. She said Pitt was becoming a monster as he ranted on the plane and mimicked the behavior of a monster and screamed at them. She and the kids were shell-shocked during the flight, said Jolie, who added that she was frozen scared and didn't know what to do in the moment. Additionally, Jolie alleged there was approximately $25,000 in damages to the plane caused by red wine stains and claimed that Pitt poured beer on her at one point. That's disrespectful as fuck. The report says Jolie had injuries to her back and elbow plus a rug burn type wound on her hand while Pitt sustained a scratch, which she noted could have been from her. <laughs> a source close to Pitt tells people that there is nothing new here and both he and Jolie have had these documents for years. It was investigated and there were no charges brought. It's standard for these types of things to not be released. Both parties had it, says the source. There is no benefit to this. It is harmful to the children and the entire family for this to be made public. The source says Pitt has remained silent on this issue because he knows that it is in the best, uh, it's the best thing for the kids. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Last year, Jolie reflected on her divorce while speaking with The Guardian, saying, I'm not the kind of person who makes decisions like the decisions I had to make lightly. It took a lot for me to be in a position where I felt I had to separate from the father of my children. Jolie, who mentioned there's a lot I can't say, said she felt broken by her experiences and that she wanted her family to find a way to move forward, including their dad. At the time, a source close to Pitt who has denied allegations of physical abuse told people in response to Jolie's comments, it's hard to see how continuing down this path benefits anybody. Back when Politico first reported the FOIA case back in April, attorney Amanda Kramer told, Kramer told the outlet, I'm unable to comment on the identity of Jane Doe who has sought to preserve the family's privacy. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. This is messy. This is messy. Do you guys think that Brad Pitt was like over the beating uh, her ass? Her stories don't make sense. I mean, I don't feel like it doesn't make sense. I just also don't believe it's that severe. It just doesn't sound that severe to me. But, you know. I, I'm I'm like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I don't believe her. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, men are known to be violent. <laughs> um, I think they're both violent. So I think so too. I think so too. But I also feel like you know she plays her Mother Teresa role very well. Brad seems soft to me. I think you only feel that way because he's pretty. I think that the children have kind of let you know. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think the children have kind of like let us know what's really hood. And yeah, I yeah, exactly. This is what I anything is possible with a drunk. And that's what I was gonna say. Him like being an alcoholic might really be like the main issue there. Like, not that he was always this way, but that over the years you get older, you get more ornery, you know, you're not the you're not the same. Y'all, here's the thing. When I really look at Brad Pitt. As much as Brad Pitt is still successful, still considered a heartthrob, he's not the young heartthrob that he once was. And I do believe for a lot of men, when they fall out of what they consider their prime, it can be very detrimental to their self-esteem. And when men have low self-esteem for any reason, they can treat the people around them like shit. You know what I'm saying? And so... um someone who adopts internationally is suspect to me i i used to i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say it like that i understand where you're coming from and i agree with you with them i didn't feel that that was happening i felt like they was really trying to have the um josephine baker situation like i don't know if y'all knew about josephine baker but there there are a lot of people out there that want to adopt a lot of kids because there's something that makes them want to provide like this this home and have this big old family and you know like they have an uh, i think a romanticized idea of what having a whole bunch of kids is going to look like and and what that is for them to take in kids and i do think a lot of times people like to pat themselves on the back and feel like i'm a great person because i adopted somebody but i just kind of feel like that just i don't know i need to see how you treat children because i think a lot of times when people adopt kids even if it's not meant to abuse them it's meant only to be validation that the person is a good person you know what i'm saying 
Um, which, you know, I'm questioning why you would feel like you need to prove that. Crystal, thank you for the super sticker, my love. Thank you. Jordan, thank you for the super sticker. Thank you. Ascension Intentions, thank you for the super chat. You can't upset the people who know how to work soundboards and engineering equipment. Rod got him in audio and video. Bruh. <laughs> Listen. Listen. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Questionable. These people. Questionable. Absolutely. fucking lootly Abso fucking lootly um, I was just watching... Um, Y'all, what is this? Is a cult show? I forgot the name of the show, but it basically, you know, when you they take down certain cults, and they had this cult that was ran by a woman, and she had went to Africa and adopted this child, brought the child back, and was abusing the child. The child ended up getting rickets from being malnutritioned. It was ridiculous. Like I don't know if anybody has Max or Hulu. I think it might have been on Hulu that that one was on. But yeah, people do terrible things. So I absolutely feel you about like when people adopt out of the country, it can sometimes be like, what the fuck? But I do know somebody that's done that. And, you know, of course, that wasn't the situation at all. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it actually was a really great beneficial situation. It's easier to get children out there than it is out here, apparently. But anyway, y'all. What the fuck? <laughs> Y'all, what the fuck? Aoki Simmons kissing a 65-year-old man during a romantic vacation to St. Bart's on Tuesday. Page six obtained these photos. This is the youngest daughter of Kamora Lee Simmons and Russell Simmons. Girl. Girl. It's absolutely giving following in my mother's footsteps. That's nasty. I'm sorry, y'all. A, a 43 <clears throat> a 43-year age difference. 21, 65. And listen, it's not like it's not an entirely bad looking 65, but still, bitch, you 21. Neighbors, it's getting a little a little warmer outside, so y'all know what that means. It's sugar daddy season, and it looks like Aoki Lee Simmons got a memo child. Okay, according to people, Aoki 21 is confirmed to be dating Vittorio Asaf, a 65-year-old restauranteur who is the founder of the Serafina Restaurant Group. Aoki and Vittorio are spending time together and enjoying each other's company. And listen, I'm calling me. It doesn't like it's her response. It's not even like it has to be that serious. It's just still gross. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just it's just still gross. And it's still giving what happened with your mama and your daddy. And I don't feel like that was healthy in the long run. But, you know, what do I know, girl? Let's hear what she had to say. I, I don't like being called. I was going to say to my friends. Um, people are calling me. I, I don't like being called. I was going to say to my friends. Um, people are calling me. I, I don't like being called. I was in St. Bart's with my friends. I was in St. Bart's with my friends. Okay, that's what she said. She To me, this is not you denying anything. Like, you, didn't de you can't deny that. Like, I'm sorry. What's to deny? What are, what are you denying? That's your friend. He, he, your, he, your, he your friend. That's what y'all call old niggas that y'all fuck on for money. That's your friend. Y'all don't go together. <laughs> you know what is absolutely not given. I'm just your deal, though. That's all I can be. I ain't even charge you. Let you fuck me for free. Like, that, that's not what this is at all. <laughs> okay. Listen. He got money and she probably need money. Y'all know they got a whole bunch of shit going on with Russell Simmons and Kamora and the money and all of that. So she need money. A whole lot of money, I guess. I can't be upset at the young girl. Live your life. It's gross to me. But you know, I can't really judge nobody. It ain't my coochie. You know what I'm saying? I can only walk around with mine. I can't walk around with hers. Um, but she is young. And, you know, maybe, it's, you know, some of the young girls like older guys. They want to get taken out. They want to get, you know, they want to have a good time. They want somebody to spend money on them. That's great, girl. Just be safe out here, okay? You don't want to end up, you know, no ditty. You don't want to end up like that, okay? I'm, that's the reference we're going to be using. Um, Glorilla and JT beefing on Twitter. Why? Glorilla basically said that they, you know, they not beefing in her song. Y'all, Glorilla's album is good. 
I really enjoyed it when I bumping it in my Jeep on the way to hot yoga today. And I just got into Doja's and it's, 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 you know, it's, I like Scarlet one better, but I'm going to, I still need to listen to it more. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I dated old when I was young. It wasn't bad. Okay. I'm not saying it's bad. Have fun to the people. Have fun, girl. Just be safe. Like I said, <laughs> no ditty. Anyway, y'all. I appreciate y'all for coming through today. Make sure y'all like the video. Thank y'all so much for supporting the channel. It is greatly appreciated. Um, you know, um, but I'll see y'all in about another 30 minutes for my members only live. Okay, people. All right. Okay. See y'all later. Have a good weekend.